Shalom, this is Rabbi Klein from the Greater Miami Jewish Federation. If you go to Israel and you celebrate Hanukkah, you're going to hear the stories about the bravery of the Maccabim, how they fought and established the independent Jewish state, the last independent Jewish state before the year 1948. And it makes a lot of sense to celebrate this narrative of Hanukkah at this time of year. However, consider the actual Maccabim and when they lived. Actually, the Jewish people had lived underneath the government of the Syrian Greeks for decades, or more than a century, actually. So why did the Maccabim suddenly wake up and rebel? Because it wasn't a battle for political independence. It was a battle for religious independence. It was a battle for religious freedom. Because under Antiochus and the Syrian Greeks, Jews were not allowed to practice their faith. They were not allowed to do Brit Milah, circumcision. They were not allowed to practice Shabbat. And most importantly, they weren't allowed to learn the Torah, which informs who we are. So the, the Greeks said, yes, you can live as human beings. You just can't live as Jews. They didn't care about destroying the Jewish body. Their war was against the Jewish soul. And for this, the Maccabees stood up and they fought a war to ensure that the flame of Torah would continue. If last century, the story of Yom Ma'ut of the War of Independence, was a battle for our bodies, for our place in the world, the story of Hanukkah really is about a battle for the nefesh, a battle for the soul. Consider the partial that we're reading right now, the story of Joseph in Egypt. Joseph becomes second only to Pharaoh in his power. He moves up the ranks of Egypt like no one ever saw. However, there was a price to pay. Because who was Joseph in Egypt? Not Joseph. He didn't have a Hebrew name. His name was Tzafnat Paneach. They rename him. Why? Because that's the price you need to pay to rise up in the ranks. You can't do this as Joseph. You have to do it as Tzafnat Paneach. When the brothers come down to Egypt, it says that the brothers didn't recognize him. What, he aged a few years and they don't recognize the eyes of their own brother? That sounds pretty unbelievable. But the reason is because he didn't dress like a, like a Hebrew. He didn't eat like a Hebrew. And he didn't dress, and he didn't clearly speak like a Hebrew. All of these things, they didn't see that he was their own brother. He had become Egyptian for all intents and purposes. The price of him moving up in society was, at least in the public sphere, denying all evidence that he was ever Jewish in the first place. It's interesting that we call him Yosef HaTzadik, the righteous Joseph. We call him that, I believe, because in spite of all of that, he was able to hold on to his essential identity. He never forgot his father's house. And for that reason, he was righteous, that he could remain proud as a Jew, even in Egypt. You know, we are living and celebrating Hanukkah, which is a minor holiday, during the Christmas season. And we're always comparing ourselves with what's going on around us right now. It's part of, the holiday of Hanukkah has become part of the holiday season. And we're constantly having to negotiate between who we are and the outside world. And it's so easy for us to forget who we really are. It says in the al Hanisim prayer, the prayer that we say during the Amidah on Hanukkah, the, the goal of the Greeks was Lashkicham Torah to make the Jewish people forget their Torah. Without the Torah, we lose our uniqueness as a people. That's the reason why we were placed in this world. That's our mission in this world. Living in America, I think the challenge for all of us is how are we going to maintain our uniqueness? How are we going to be part of this great society? But how are we going to be apart from the society. How are we for ourselves going to maintain our uniqueness, our unique vision? And how are we educating our family and our friends and our children? How are we making sure that they hold on to these values? That is a challenge that I ask myself. And that is a challenge that I put forth for each of you during this Hanukkah season. I wish all of you a Chag Urim Sameach, a great festival of lights.